Well, hey, this is Grixon, and uh, thank you for coming to my little channel here. We're doing a plus plus nine necrotic wake. If you know me from back in the day, Shadowlands was kind of my jam. So, uh, count has changed here quite a bit. So, you know, it's not how it used to be exactly. And they changed a lot of like how the abilities work in here so they're not as impactful as they used to be i actually over pull in here and i'll explain why so the bags we don't need here but i'm afraid that when i pull the boss we will need it so this is a tyrannical key it's plus nine so it's not tyrannical and fortified yet so this is me kind of stabilizing a little bit kind of getting a dream fluids kick and i also if you noticed i mind controlled a stitched vanguard so now I'm going to pull this gatekeeper in. Um, I should have death strike much earlier. I didn't. And I'm going to pull these soldiers in. So I'm a little overwhelmed. I should have been faster. So dancing rune weapon should have happened earlier. Death strike economy should have been better. So there are things that I was not doing correct. But it still worked out. And then it's just making sure you get the proper kicks. Like I said, I mind controlled the stitched vanguard. They're the ones who are scary in this whole poll. So if you can mind control stitched vanguard, cool. I do want these bags here because we want access to that spear over there. The better play would have been to pull these into the next poll. Kind of combine them. My healer on the top left, his mana is at 77%, so we're fine. So I should have grabbed him, or grabbed those bags, into the next pull. Now, I want those soldiers, but he's next to the gatekeeper, so I have to wait. Um, big thing here is just that throw cleaver. Make sure you're cleaving onto your enemies instead of your teammates. Throw cleaver is going to give you a big fat arrow. It's going to let you know. Like there. And again, just making sure my coagulopathy is at five stacks. So my blood boil does as, uh, my blood plague does as much as possible. Especially when I have Dancing Rune Weapon going, so it's three stacks of Blood Plague. I do want these bags to go come with us. And so the name of the game here is you want the Heaving Wretch to be behind the boss. So the Blood Worms spawn behind. Then when you put down your Death and Decay, they are slowed by like 90%. Kill them on the boss, let him do his Fetid Gas, and then back up. So now, look, we've left enough room for the boss to, we have room here, so somebody can do Heaving Wretch behind the boss into those green puddles. So that's the whole, that's the whole thing here, is just Heaving Wretching behind the boss, slowing these worms, and then just trying to see Fetid Gas, we want him. We want these worms to kind of die on the fetid gas, like that. See, I kind of stuck around a little bit longer. But you got to be careful. There's still a gatekeeper over there, so we don't want that. Um, I messed up my coagulopathy, so you can tell I'm at two stacks now. I was worried about those worms, so I wasn't keeping up how I should. Um, these these kind of things just kind of come as you play, and if I'm worried about mechanics, I'm going to like not do the best job there. Wretch. Again, so we have all this room, so if I wanted to, I could actually pivot back around and do like a giant U. I'm kind of bringing them up towards the stairs though. I want to keep this straight line going. So here's where I mess up a little bit. I didn't have my right, my, we don't need this. Up on the top here, we don't need this. This is wasted time. We don't need this. So if you follow this key and you do this route, don't grab these. You don't need this for a count. 
Sorry, I'm petting my dog right now. She heard me start talking, and it's been quiet all night, so um, she's like, what's going on here? So she stood up. Normally she kind of lays by my by my computer desk while I'm gaming and doing keys, and this is a key that actually happened tonight, so after the key was done, I kind of got out of the game, dropped right into, uh, right into this. So, this is as usual. I still have my Stitch Vanguard, but one thing to know here is Stitch, uh, the cooldown, like, you can only hold, you can only dominate an undead so long. And so the tech here is you want to make sure you're grabbing these vanguards and that you only have them for so long so i actually had that guy all through the boss fight all through all of that so he only lasts so long and then you lose control of him you'd have to re-grab him again i didn't need to so it's not a big deal here but just keep that in mind and if you are playing blood decay i would highly recommend at least grabbing control undead in this dungeon specifically so what i drop here is i drop um anti-magic zone for control undead um, and then the, just the big thing is whenever there's a sorcerer around make sure that you're looking out for shadow well so whenever you see him starting to cast shadow well mine actually tells me it goes shadow well when he's gonna like there when he's gonna cast it and you just need to move it's a lot of magic damage when it happens you could AMS and get away with it but you need to be very careful of it. Here I like to use my orb just because I can enter, um, if you didn't know when you use the orb, it does AOE damage, but the big benefit here is it interrupts casts. So at every pulse of the orb, it interrupts casts. And all of these dudes like to cast. So I like to use it to kind of interrupt a lot of the casts. In the beginning, Shadow Well's happening, I move. If you get hit by one of those explosions like I did, you get silenced. Which means you can't death strike. So just be very careful there. So if it's a tyrannical week, under 10, of course at 10 it's tyrannical and fortified. It really depends on you and how you feel and how good your team is. Um, you can pull these into your next pack, which I will do. I'm waiting for the first rasping screams to go off because of those uh, fear. Once that happens, I'm going to back these up into this back pack here. And then I'll A-bomb limb and just pull it all together and just watch out for frost bolt volleys. This Raptor screen is going to go off, so I'm going to use Lichborn as a blood decay. Lichborn uh, gets rid of fear and charm and stuff like that. So not only does Lichborn give us a good damage reduction, but also can just get rid of fear. So this dungeon and Mr. Turnacive give a good amount of fear. Uh, from the first boss in that dungeon so if fear is about to go off you can AMS to stop the fear or you can Lichborn and so generally the only the only mob here that never moves is the crossbowman so the guy you want to post up on is the crossbowman and then anything you kick they will come to you. The crossbow one will never move. Blah, blah, blah. Will never move. So, if you have to do it, make sure that you're uh, posting up on that crossbow man. And that also works with the boss too. Two sorcerers here, so watch out for shadow well. Two shadow wells. Boom! I step out of them. No problem. And just kick rasping scream. So just be very careful of Shadow Well. That's your biggest thing. And then these bone carvers, 
They do a big frontal, so make sure you face it towards a wall. Your team should know not to stand with you because of the uh, frontal. But if they don't, you know, they're gonna be they're gonna learn real quick. Gruesome cleave. <laughs> they're gonna learn it real quick. So right here, I'm going to pull all this because I do have another orb ready. I'm gonna grab it all. Like I said, it is a fortified week, so I'm just gonna grab. Or it's a tyrannical week, so I'm just gonna grab it all. And then I'm gonna end up using this orb here. Shadow well. So I kind of waited until things were up to me before I did it. And then it's just interactions with my bone shield stacks using tombstone and bone storm to spend bone shield stacks inside a death cave for bone shield or for bone splinters AOE damage and then also reducing the cooldown on my dancing rune weapon of course dancing rune weapon gives you a crap ton of parry but then also duplicates your weapon twice so blood plague hits three stacks three times three stacks apply which makes it so if you do end up using a consumption three stacks with five coagulopathy is hitting hard and then consumption making them tick 60 percent faster is big damage especially in a huge pull so if you see right now in damage done overall on the bottom right i'm doing almost a mil overall in this key and that's just for me pulling big and trying to keep coagulopathy up Okay, so this boss has blood decay. It's very easy. The biggest thing, like I said, is when the ads come out, try your best to post up on the cross bowmen and then grip mages in. That's your biggest play here. So I'm looking right now for the cross bowmen. I see the cross bowmen and look, I'm coming right to him. And then I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get um, aggro. But anytime somebody kicks a mage, they're just going to be silenced and they're going to run to me. The only person who will never run to me is the crossbowman. So that's the biggest key to this fight is just finding that crossbowman, posting up on him, gripping everything else in. So I have an A-bomb limb ready, so we're not really worried. I have two stacks of my death grip and then A-bomb limb. And this guy is not going to last long. So I'm fine with it. So I'm not even going to go to the crossbowman here. I'm just going to grip, and I'm going to grip him in. See? No problems. That's going to set me up for a big, um, a big, uh, what is it? Reaper's Mark. I did drop coagulopathy because I'm not perfect. I never said I was. I'm not going to be one of those blood decay gods that you see, like, doing plus 15s. I hope you're not here to watch me for that, because that, you know, I don't play this for a living. I literally do a key or two at night when my kids are asleep. But I know a thing or two about Shadowlands, because that's when I used to play a lot. Okay, you can break up these pulls however you wish. Um, it depends on how strong you feel and how good your damage is for your team. Of course, there's interrupting. The big things here, the biggest thing here from the collectors is that gorge bladder that needs to be kicked no matter what. This was not great. Um, Somebody pulled extra here. I don't like it. Um, stitch work will absolutely do work on your butthole. Like, I'm sorry to be as vulgar as that, but these stitch works, and if a gore splatter goes out, it's big damage. Um, but stitch work does the tenderize. That gore splatter went out, so we had two gore splatters back to back go out, which is not great. And that is my cheat death. So I'm a little scared here. Stitch work is pretty rough. 
Um, because of tenderize and mutilate. So tenderize, I have four stacks if you see on the top, right? Tenderize um, shreds your armor. Then mutilate does a big hit, a big physical hit. So, yeah, that's a problem. If you get a lot of stacks of it, as a blood decay, our biggest kit is we take a lot of damage up front. However, we death strike it back. So our our uh, health naturally just yo-yos a lot. And the amazing thing about blood decay is the skill ceiling is incredibly high. So if you master this, your healer never has to really pay attention to you because you can just take care of yourself. If you can take care of your own economy with the rune spending versus runic power for death strikes, which comes with time, because you have to balance a lot at the same time, but the reward is immense. So we take a lot of damage up front. So the stitch work design of the tenderize and mutilate is just um, horrible for our class, specifically. So I try and blood boil, death and decay, and then taunt the far one to try and get them close to each other. I find if you get them close to each other, then it's easier for your DPS or healer to get those uh, throw cleavers correct. However, you see here, our mage could have ice blocked us. He had both. So he's trying to get them in the same spot. He tries to blink out of the way. He could have just ice blocked. He was kind of screwed there no matter what, so might as well ice block it. He didn't. He died. It's not the end of the world. So we actually already have count. And we have count because I grabbed that top shelf and after the first boss. So if you're doing my exact route, don't grab that top shelf after the first boss and you're completely fine. It's 100% count, you're good. Oh, coagulopathy, yep. So pretty much coagulopathy. You need a death strike every eight seconds. And then your blood plague will hit much harder. And then you can use your execute. So your execute is the, um, what is it called? Soul Reaper. Basically, you can use it when they are at a third life. When it explodes, it does AoE damage. If they die, when you have it on them, you get runic corruption, which pretty much is a fancy word that your runes regenerate faster. But it's basically an execute, so it's good to have one on. Something's at, th uh, you know, a third life. You might as well just throw one on. So I put one on that left over there so I can get that runic corruption. It does decent damage too, it's not like bad or anything. So I'm looking at my healer's mana, he's got 80%, I think we're okay here, so I'm just gonna pull it. So if you didn't know how this boss works, is this creation's gonna come down, he's gonna still do mutilate, tenderize, and he has the AoE magic damage to you. But basically, um, you need to be worrying about that, but then the hook. So first hook is going to pull the boss down. Second hook is going to stop. Um, second hook will stop fixation. Third hook will pull the boss back down. So that's how creations work. 
first hook boss, second hook stop, fixate, third hook pull the boss back down right away. So this guy needs to be there. Why is he blinking last second? Who knows? But he could have pulled the boss down and we could have killed him faster. It doesn't matter in the end because we still double time it. It's not like... It didn't cost us the double time. It didn't cost us the key. It's not that big of a deal, but these are small things that can make the key smoother when it really matters on like a 10, 11, 12. So just remember, these creations are going to do three hooks. And that's the big thing. You cannot kill it too fast because then it won't be able to do its three hooks. So there's kind of a balance there. My healer still has 60% mana, so I'm gonna kinda pull I'm gonna give him a couple seconds and pull right into it. Cause if you see, I got four seconds on my bone shield stacks. One second. So I'm just gonna use it right away, because I don't want to lose my bone shield stacks. So the big threat to the tank here is the Ice Shard. Ice Shard is a mix of physical and magical damage. So you can EMS to negate half of the damage. Com Common Storm, you just stagger step, not a big deal, but the Ice Shard is the big thing. So EMS, I'm not doing the greatest job here, but AMS can save you from one of them and then um, you could Lichborn the next one, you could aim, you can aim uh, IBF the next one after that, I spent 42, so you do have options here. I'm just not, I'm just death striking through it, I'm not even thinking about it, I'm honestly I'm just watching Coagulopathy in my rune to runic power economy, making sure I'm not falling behind. And then when I start to kind of fall behind, I'm like, oh crap, I probably should actually be pressing my buttons. So that's on me. That's Lichborn. Umbilicus Eternus is going on, so I'm not going to be taking damage while that's up because it's a fat shield. Now that that's over, I think I need to AMS after this Comet Storm. He won't do Ice Shards during Comet Storm because it's a channel. Now he does, so I could AMS this next one. I'm still not doing it because I'm dumb. There it is. Finally, I get with the program. Dark Exile, all that stuff. As a tank, we don't worry about it at all. Basically, someone goes down below and has to do like a little mini game and then come back up and drop a puddle. We don't care about that though. So, Lichborn, I did IBF. Now, Lichborn's back up. I should be using it. I'm not gonna because I'm bad. And that's it. A double time. Well. Thank you for watching. Spare meat hook. I think it's pretty good for me. Um, yeah, appreciate you guys being here. I'll see you in the next one. I'm gonna try my best to keep making videos. Let me know if you if there's anything you want me to focus on. If it's rotation, if it's mechanic wise in the dungeon, just let me know. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for still being a subscriber. Welcome if you're new. And uh, yeah. See you guys later.